Lucky on this very special memorial piece. I'm liking my colors and everything, so I'm going to go in with uh, some tints instead of some shimmery powders because I want the natural sparkle that I have here to kind of come through. I have no idea what blue this is. But I've got my resin all mixed up, so now I just pour a little bit in some separate cups for my tints. And when I work with ocean pieces, I tend to start with usually three different colors of blues and greens and make like a blended gradient. And then as I add layers, I usually add less and less color because I want the deeper colors to shine through from the bottom and anywhere that I've added any shimmer or sparkle. And then I place the darker of the two further up on the piece. The nice thing with resin is it likes to kind of self-level and spread on its own so I can let it sit for a little bit without having to spread it right away and you also waste less resin that way. So now I'll just let that sit and kind of spread. The fun part is creating the waves and I really like the cells that got created here so I'm going to try not to cover those too much and I'll just put some clear resin there. And then what makes the waves is my white pigment, which you don't need much of. I always make way too much, so I just put like a tiny bit of resin, and then my white. So my favorite white pigment is the Lorez Expressions, and this is the Angel White. I know there's lots out there, and honestly, I'm scared to try because I love this one so much, and it gives me the results that I'm looking for but I go through it so quickly and it's expensive, but it does the job that I want it to consistently. So with the memorial pieces, what I do is I first mix resin and just some regular sand. You can see them, um, just regular sand you can get from any craft store. If a customer has their own sand, I can definitely use that, like from a beach that they love to go to or something like that. And I lay that down and while it's still wet, I take a small amount of the ashes and I sprinkle them throughout, let them kind of settle. And then I, I'll go in with my fingers and just kind of tap everything in, make sure it's nice and blended and even. And then sometimes I go in with another layer as well of the ashes, depending on how it's looking. And at this point, I like to go in with my fingers a lot, but then I go through way more gloves. So I try to avoid that sometimes, even though it's way more fun. Um, I go in and just spread everything to the edges first to make sure that's all covered. Because when I go in with my heat gun, everything will naturally get blown off the edge. But if there isn't kind of a resin layer, wet resin layer there already, it may stop and I don't want to have any gaps close to my edges. And this is where if I have a few different colors that need to be blended, I'll go in and blend them. Like I'll bring the darker color down a little bit or the lighter color up, whatever I think kind of looks the best. And this resin pretty much all spread by itself. I hardly ever do anything here. Okay, now I'm going in with just some clear stuff along the edge here so I can maintain some of these cells that I've already created. You'll notice a lot of my tools are silicone and the reason I work with them is they're reusable because once the resin dries, for the most part I can just peel it off of the silicone tools which is awesome. However, I do use a lot of popsicle sticks. Let me try and find a good example of one I've been using. I reuse them until they get covered in stuff. So this is all dry, so this I could still use as a stir stick. So I just keep reusing and reusing until there's no usable space anymore. So right now I'm just going to let this sit because what I like to do is have my resin cure a little bit. So I like to sit and work on something else 
and let my resin cure a little bit so the white gets a little bit more um, thick, I guess, cream, not creamy, sticky. I find it creates better cells. I don't always do this, but for this piece I am because I think that's how I got these big beautiful ones here. All right, this is the fun part. <laughs> gentle wave over top of the ones that are a bit more foamy. And I think I'm going to do one up here. that small section that I did there. So I'm going to try to remedy that. The nice thing about working with resin is you can always come back and add more layers. So for my resin pieces, I usually have at least three layers. And I think the most I've ever done, oh man, I wanna say like eight to 10 layers. So that's a lot of layers. It's a lot of resin and that's a lot of weight. <laughs> so this one I'm liking the look of right now, I find if I go in too much, I'm just gonna frustrate myself and ruin things. So I'm gonna leave it as is. I'm gonna blow it with my torch to pop any of the surface bubbles. And this also helps those little white cells to kind of come to life a bit more. And that is that for layer three. Now I'll cover it and let it sit. And probably this time tomorrow, if I get a chance, I will come do another layer. <laughs> 